how to bridge, fill, or bevel. So let's uh, select these, delete it. So if we want to, let's say, uh, let's, let's go to add mesh plane. And we'll go into edit mode. So we're going to take the face. There's only one face in here. I'll select, I'll take that and move. To duplicate that face, I'll press Shift D. And you'll see that it'll create a duplicate and it's moving around. I'm going to constrain it to the Y axis, which is the green, by pressing Y while this is still in this move mode. And it will constrain it. If you want to constrain it in the X axis, you press X. If you want to constrain it in the Z axis, you press Z. But in this case, I want to constrain it in the Y, so I'll move it here. Remember, we're in edit mode in Polygon, so it's just one object. So if I go to Edge and I select one edge, let and Shift select the other edge here. What you could do here is if you go to Edge Bridge Edge Loops, it will connect them for you. I'll press Control Z to undo. You could also do Control E. And you'll get this edge menu just floating where you are, though, where your cursor is. Control E, and then you could do bridge edge, edge loop like that. I'll press Control Z to undo that. There are some other options. So if I press Control E, choose bridge edge loop. There's options down here. If I open that up, what you could do with that, for example, you could choose number of cuts and you could move these up and you could see that more cups cuts maybe if i go to x-ray mode here you could see it better you could choose how much cuts that are bridged together here i'll undo that so let's show the other option how to fill a hole so that's bridges bridge if you select the same edges from one side to the other it will bridge them together. I'll delete this object in object mode. I'll go to add. Let's say I'll add a mesh UV sphere. I'm still in X-ray mode here. I'll take it off. I can either press the period on the number pad key to zoom in, or I could press the tilde, which is right under the escape key or on the left side of the one key if you have a an English US keyboard, or right above the tab, you have this thing that looks like, um, or, or the back tick or the tilde, the, kind of, the back tick looks kind of like a quotation. When you click on that button, you'll get this menu that you could choose instead of uh, pressing the number, but the numbers on your keyboard, like one or three or seven to change the view, you could, you could do it from here. You press that button, the tilde, the button right now, under the escape key and choose the option. But what's cool about it as well, uh, actually, if I just use my middle mouse button and just rotate on back in perspective view, if I click the tilde or the back tick button, which is, again, under the escape key, right next to the one on the left of it, this option here, view selected, will also zoom in. So if you're on, let's say, a laptop that doesn't have a number pad, that's another way you could zoom in. So back to the fill hole, in, we're in object mode right now. Let's go to edit mode. So we go, go to the components, choose the vertices or uh, the faces, and I'll shift, well, select nothing, empty space to uh, deselect, hold shift and click, left click, couple of faces, and I'll press delete, and then if you choose faces. So what you could do, if I go into edge mode, by clicking edge, hold alt and click the adjacent or the neighboring or the edge right next to it, it will automatically select the hole. And to fill that hole, you could go to vertex, new edge face from vertices. Even though you're in edge mode, it knows these are the vertices and it'll fill the hole for you. If I go to vertices, you'll see that the vertices are there. You're missing edges here. If you're trying to do all polygons, um, Another way, if I control Z while these are still selected, I control Z a couple times just to get back to selection. If you notice in here, vertex, the shortcut is F, new edges, 
new edge face from vertices. So if you just press F instead, that also will fill it up. There's also, if I press, whoops, control Z, there's also another option under face. There is face fill, which is alt F. And you notice it's different because what it will do is try to make triangles to keep them all um, triangle, which will be good if you're dealing with a game engine, which usually, let's say, Unreal, if you bring in a static mesh, it always makes everything triangles. But when you're, if you're modeling for, for it to be edited or to be deformed for animation, like in a rig, this is not a good edge flow or topology is not that good. Well, the other one isn't good as either, but in a lot of cases, you probably would choose pressing F, which is vertex, fill, edge, and vertices. And you understand a little why when we get into modeling a character, for example, or something that deforms. And then, and then just continuing your edges to make sure that you'll have quads or four sided polygons for def deformation. And one way you could do that, if I press Control Z to undo this, while this edge is still selected, again, if you need to select it again, select one edge, um, then hold Alt and select an adjacent one or a neighbor one or the one next to it, and it'll select the loop here that will close the hole. Another way is under face, there is a grid fill right under the fill. The difference with that one is that it will actually try to keep We'll try to close it in a gr as a grill fashion, like this. So that way, it actually tries to keep the quad. And this is most likely what you want to do for your topologies. One other thing I want to show: I go back to object mode. I select this sphere and delete it. In object mode, you can just delete. You don't have to choose face edges or vertices. I'm going to go to add mesh. I'm going to choose a cube, mainly because they have sharp edges here. Usually when you're rendering or creating lighting in real life, even when something looks sharp, it's actually not that sharp. There's a little bit of a roundness in here. And that's where highlights get captured when that's how you get highlights when you're lighting. So when you're actually modeling, unless you're doing like something optimized for like a game engine, a lot of times you want to actually to capture the highlights, you want to kind of round these or add more detail. One way of doing that is go to edit mode. I'll just choose an edge, go to edge here, select an edge. And then you could bevel by going over here, or you could pull these out if you want to see the name. There's a bevel. And now you get this icon here. And you have some options up here as well. But if you take that, well, manipulator, not icon, the manipulator, and you pull it, you'll see that the edges kind of like split apart. Right, right now it looks flat, right? If I do that, well, if I undo, go to the side, you see it looks like it's flattening, flattening. But if down here you have this option, if you click on it and open it before you commit, after you move it, you can add more segments, and that's what rounds it out. So you could see, if I add more segments, it rounds it out. And the more you do, the more you'll have, but you have a lot more density. So it's a balancing act of optimization. It's a balancing act between optimization and a roundness. And it's really the visual look that you'll get. This might be, you know, this may be enough to get, capture the highlights. Um, Maybe you just move this a little bit like that. Then you just do a couple of segments for the highlights. Do. And also you could press, if you just selected edge, you could press control B to do the last operation. Well, it's still going to be bevel, but the last operation, meaning like it had still four segments. So if I undo that, and let's say I take the other side, it's going to be one segment now, control B. That's a shortcut. And 
Let me do that again. Select this, Control B, and then I'll have that option. I can select this and bevel it that way. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.